now welcome back to the hearing the documents relied upon by the discipline authority are taken on record if they are not challenged by the charge employee now if the documents are challenged by the charge employee on on some grounds it can be marked by the inquiry officer only when it is produced through a witness who certifies its genuineness the documents are normally marked as pd1 prosecution document 1 prosecution document 2 or Uh, state exhibit one, state exhibit two. You may follow any procedure. Now, after the documents are taken on record, the examination of the witness on behalf of the discipline authority is taken up first. Now, each witness would pass through three stages in his examination. Now, these three stages are examination in chief, cross examination, and re exam. now examination in chief is done by the party which has called such witness cross examination is done by the opposite party and re examination is again done by the party which has called the witness so you can see when the state witness would come first examination in chief will be done by the presenting officer cross examination will be done by the charge employee and again the re examination will be done by the presenting officer now let us understand in details the three stages now examination in chief which is the first stage is the process by which the witness narrates before the inquiry officer the facts which are within his personal knowledge and which are relevant to the matter under inquiry since the witness on behalf of the discipline authority are produced first it is the presenting officer obviously who would carry out the examination in chief now one thing to remember is that no leading questions are allowed either in the examination in chief or in the reexamination now what are leading questions now leading questions are questions which are which suggest the answer to which the person asking the question is expecting or wishes to receive from the witness now let us assume that the charge on an employee is of assault on a colleague mr x y z in the office on 12th january 2022 at around 11 am now obviously the presenting officer would like to bring some witness through which he will try to prove that that witness saw the charge employee you know assaulting the mr x y z now the presenting officer in such situation cannot ask a question to the prosecution witness like did you see the charge employee assaulting mr x y z on 12th january 2022 that would be a leading question he should rephrase the question and ask the witness like please tell what you saw on that particular date on that particular time now leading questions are thus not allowed please remember either in the examination chief or during re examination now let us come to the cross examination after the examination chief of the state witness is over the opposite party that is the charge officer gets an opportunity to cross examine the witness it is well established that no oral testimony can be considered satisfactory or valid unless it is tested by cross examination the mere statement of the witness in examination of chief cannot constitute evidence in any case unless and until it is tested by cross examination now therefore cross examination is an essential element of the principles of natural justice and if denied to the charge officer may vitiate the inquiry cross examination is one of the most powerful weapon in the hands of the charge officer to unravel truth and break completely a false witness and as such has great value for either party that is charge officer as well as for presenting officer the object of the cross examination is to try to impeach the accuracy credibility the general value of the witness by cross examination one may attempt to elicit suppressed facts half truths which may go in the favor of the employee now the courts have held in a way, number of judgments that for proper appraisal of evidence we must consider the whole statement and by whole statement it means cross examination constitute an important part of the statement of the witness and whatever is stated in the examination chief stands tested by the cross examination therefore each witness has to be individually passed through the three stages discussed just above now the cross examination cannot be postponed till 
the statement of all the witnesses are recorded. Each witness have to pass through three stages. Now, leading questions which was not permitted in examination of chief, if you remember, or re-examination, however, are allowed in cross-examination. Cross-examination need not be confined to the testimony of the witness in the examination in chief. It may cover the entire field of defense also. Subject, however, to certain restrictions. So, those restrictions must be ensured that the by the inquiry officer. Thus, the inquiry officer should not allow any question which is insulting or annoying or which though proper in itself is needlessly offensive in form. He should not allow an indecent or scandalous question. Similarly, he should not allow a question which is trying to injure the character of the witness but is not directly related to the importance of the witness. So, there are certain restrictions in cross-examination, otherwise cross-examination is unlimited in its scope. Third stage of the examination of each witness is re-examination. The purpose of re-examination is to obtain clarification from the witness on any point on which he was cross-examined. Except uh, with the permission of the inquiry officer, the witness cannot be re-examined on any new point. So only in the re-examination, the person has to confine himself to the questions or clarification which arose in the cross-examination. No new point should be raised. The rule 14 also provides that before the close of the case on behalf of the discipline authority, that means all the witnesses have been, after all the witnesses have been examined, the presenting officer may with the permission of the inquiry officer produce new evidence which was not listed in the charge sheet. But one thing is important, in case a new evidence is allowed, an adjournment of three clear days before the production of such new evidence must be allowed to the other party. And that must exclude the day of the adjournment and the day to which the inquiry is adjourned. Now, new evidence, there is one more important thing which uh, must be borne in mind. New evidence will not be permitted to fill up any gaps in the evidence. It can be permitted to fill up an inherent lacuna or defect in the evidence which has already been produced originally. But it should not be allowed to fill up a gap. Now, if the government servant demands a copy of the list of the new evidence allowed to be presented, it shall be furnished to him. Inquiry officer may himself call for new evidence also or recall or re-examine any witness. So, the rules allowed the inquiry officer to call for any new evidence on his own. The government servant may also be allowed to bring new evidence if production of such evidence is necessary and in the interest of the justice. Now, next stage in the regular hearing is the submission of the statement of defense by the charge employee. So, please understand, after all the state witnesses have been examined, this next stage is statement of defense by the charge employee. The rules provide that after the presenting officer closes his case, the charge officer shall be required to state his defense, orally or in writing, as he may prefer. Now, if the defense is made orally, it shall be recorded and the government servant shall be required to sign the record with a copy to the presenting officer. After this step is over, comes the next state of the examination of the witnesses of the defense and the recording of the evidence of the defense. Recording of evidence of defense witness will be in the same manner as done for the witness on behalf of the discipline authority. The charge officer has already submitted the list of his witness and only those witness will be examined. Charge officer can bring himself as his own witness too, but he cannot be compelled to be a witness against himself. However, if he opts to be his own witness, then he will be examined just like any other witness. That is, he will also have to pass through the three stages. His examination in chief will be done by maybe the defense assistant. Cross-examination will be done by the presenting officer. Now, please note that the examination chief of a defense witness would be required to be done by the charge employee and the cross-examination of the defense witness would be by the presenting officer and re-examination again by the charge officer or the defense assistant. So, so far what we have learned is first the examination of the state witness, then the statement of defense, then the examination of the witnesses of the 
डिफेंस साइड नाउ कम्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेज एंड विच इज़ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच इज़ कॉल्ड जनरल एग्जामिनेशन नाउ जनरल एग्जामिनेशन कम्स आफ्टर ऑल द एविडेंस ऑफ बोथ द साइड्स हैव बीन रिकॉर्डेड द इंक्वायरी ऑफिसर इज नाउ रिक्वायर्ड टू कंप्लीट अ स्टेप विच हैज़ बीन कंसिडर्ड एसेंशियल एंड ओमिशन ऑफ द स्टेप में विशिएट द इंक्वायरी दिस इज कॉल्ड द जनरल एग्जामिनेशन द इंक्वायरी ऑफिसर मस्ट एट द स्टेज जनरली क्वेश्चन द चार्ज एम्प्लॉई ऑन द सरकमस्टांसिस अपियरिंग अगेंस्ट हिम सो द इंक्वायरी ऑफिसर विल have who who has already seen the examination of the state witness defense witness he will now uh, generally examine the charge employee that these are the circumstances which are going against you now this is particularly essential if the charge officer did not present himself as his own witness this step is a formal action required to be taken by the inquiry officer before closing the case The relevant rule of the CCCCA rules 1965 is sub rule 18 of the rule 14. The apex court has held in a catena of judgments that omission to follow this important step may vitiate the inquiry. DOPT has also reiterated a number of times, and the latest being their office memorandum dated 18th February 2015. that if this step is omitted it may result in the inquiry getting vitiated so this is a very important stage at the end of the inquiry now after the general examination is over the inquiry officer may hear the presenting officer and the garment servant or permit them to file written brief you remember the four stages we talked about of the inquiry now comes the written brief part written brief is their argument of the respective uh, side in the written brief uh, nothing but the submission of each party as to how based on the evidences produced during the inquiry the charges are proved or not proved according to them the uh, the, the instructions uh, issued by the department of personal training provides that the presenting officer should while submitting his written brief within 15 days to the inquiry officer will give a copy to the charge employee now the charge employee may thereafter file his written brief within 15 days the relevant rule is uh, ru sub rule 19 of rule 14 now after the inquiry officer has received the written brief of both the sides comes the last and the final stage of the inquiry that is writing of the report by the inquiry officer and submission of the report to the discipline authority the inquiring authority has to consider the entire records of the case assess the value to be placed on each of the evidence and record his findings in the form of report which he submits to the discipline authority please note again that the report has to be submitted within 6 month from the date of the receipt of the appointment order or such extended time which the discipline authority may grant the various uh, disciplinary rules require that the inquiry officer should consider and appraise the evidence adduced during the inquiry and record his findings on each article of charge stating clearly whether or not in his opinion the charges can be held to be proved or not if the charge is partially proved in the opinion of the inquiry officer he must clearly bring out in his report which specific part of the charge is proved and why dopt wide their om dated 15th may 2012 have directed that the inquiry officer to record their findings in a comprehensive and cogent report while assessing each article of charge separately rather than clubbing them together and writing their findings in a running manner the inquiry officer should not make recommendations regarding the punishment that is a very important point to be noted inquiry officer should only say charges are proved or not proved he should not recommend any pun penalty etc in his report the conclusion must however be based on evidence and not irrelevant considerations or conjectures surmises or suspicion however strong that suspicion may be so when the inquiry officer is writing his report he should take a special care to see that no part of the evidence which the accused garment servant was not given an opportunity to refute explain or rebut is relied on against him 
no material from personal knowledge of the inquiry officer which does not form part of the evidence should be used while arriving at any conclusion the io please remember is not a prosecutor it is not his duty to somehow prove the charge it is not for him to assume that the accused officer is guilty and to obtain uh, admission now therefore when writing a report the inquiry officer must remember two very important principles while appreciating the evidences when he is writing his report or evaluating the evidences these two important principles are burden of proof and the second is standard of proof now what is burden of proof now it should be remembered that the responsibility of proving the charge is on the prosecution that is the discipline authority in other words the burden of proof is on the department and not on the employee thus the inquiry officer while writing his report or the discipline authority or the appellate authority while taking a final decision whether the charges according to them are proved or not should constantly remind themselves that whether or not the evidence is produced in the inquiry on behalf of the discipline authority establish the guilt of the charge employee if the department fails to bring evidence or the evidence produced fails to link the charge officer with the alleged misconduct then the charge is not proved it is not for the employee to prove his innocence only when the department succeeds in adducing evidence during the inquiry which tends to prove the charge that the, that the defense may now bring its own evidence to prove its innocence or rebut the evidence of the discipline authority and after analyzing the evidence of the both sides the inquiry officer should draw a final conclusion whether the charges are proved or not proved now the second important principle is the principle of standard of proof <clears throat> or the level of proof now the yardsticks and the standard of proof in a criminal case is different from the disciplinary proceedings while the standard of proof in criminal case is proof beyond all reasonable doubt the proof in a departmental proceeding is preponderance of probabilities thus the level of proof required to prove a charge in disciplinary matter is <coughs> much lesser compared to the criminal charge in one of the very important case of m siddiq versus suresh das in the year 2020 the constitution bench of the supreme court described what is preponderance of probability so i will read it out to you you can see on the screen but the court held in para 720 that the court in a civil trial applies a standard of proof governed by a preponderance of probabilities this standard is also described sometimes as balance of probabilities or the preponderance of the evidence fipson on evidence they have quoted fipson a famous author on evidence fipson on evidence formulates the standard succinctly if therefore the evidence is such that the court can say we think it more probable than not the burden is discharged but if the probabilities are equal the burden is not discharged it must however be remembered that although the level of proof in departmental cases is preponderance of probabilities yet there should be some evidence and no conclusion should be drawn only on mere suspicion however strong that may be or on conjectures or surmises one question which is often asked is can the inquiry officer record his findings on a new charge which has not been mentioned in the charge sheet now let us see the rule position the explanation below sub rule states that if in the opinion of the inquiry officer the proceedings establish an article of charge different from the original article of charge he may record his findings on such article of charge so in other words inquiry officer is entitled to record something which is not mentioned in the original article of charge but kindly see the proviso it says provided that the findings on such article of charge shall not be recorded unless the government servant has either admitted the facts on which such article of charge is based or has had a reasonable opportunity of defending himself against such article of charge 
So proviso is a very important thing. Please remember that inquiry officer can record his findings on something which was not mentioned in the article of charge provided the conditions of the proviso are met. So let us recapitulate what we have learned. The inquiry can be divided into four distinct parts. Preliminary inquiry, regular inquiry, written briefs and the submission of inquiry report. It is in the regular inquiry that the oral evidences are recorded. Please remember, regular inquiry can also be divided into four distinct parts as we have learnt already for the sake of understanding. First examination of the state witness is done. Each witness will have to pass through three stages which are examination in chief, cross-examination, re-examination. The second, after the examination of state witness is over, the charge officer shall be required to state his defence orally or in writing as he may prefer. The third part is the examination of the defence witness who shall also be examined in chief by the charge officer, cross-examined by the presenting officer and re-examined by the charge officer again. And the fourth part of the regular hearing is the general examination of the charge officer by the inquiry officer. Please remember this is mandatory, this is an essential part. This, is, this general examination is to clarify to the inquiring officer the circumstances appearing against the charge officer. So this was the quick recap of what we have done so far. So in the next unit, that is unit 4, we will discuss as to what are the ingredients of the inquiry report and what and how action is to be taken when the discipline authority receives the inquiry officer's report and what steps he has to take.